Hey guys, here we are from LVO. I have here with me the great Uncle Adam from Tabletop Minions. Be sure to uh, subscribe to Tabletop Minions if you haven't already. He has a lot of followers, but that's for good reason. Every week he comes out with the videos, and then you have a show every other Sunday. Yeah, I do a live show on YouTube every other Sunday, uh, but every Friday I put out a different, um, like, pre-recorded and edited and all that kind of video. And it comes out in the morning. Yeah, it comes out early morning. Okay, early morning. So you got to make sure you get up nice and early, you have your coffee, and then you watch a Tabletop Minions video. Absolutely. Uh, today on this video, uh, while we're here at LVO, uh, I, we there's an app that. Uh, that Uncle Adam has come out with and it's called Game For. It is a free app to download. You can get it through Android or iOS if you, yep. have, if you have iPhone. So we're going to be talking about that today. But first, I'd like to know, how has your LV open now that we're in the last day? Good. I was very glad to be able to get in because uh, leaving Wisconsin, there was this big ice storm, so I just barely kind of got out in time. Um, but uh, And then there was some kind of slowdowns, you, you know, getting through Minneapolis and there was a lot of snow and all that stuff. So I was luckily able to get here on Thursday night in time for the big media panel. Mm -hmm. um, it was like me and Kenny Boucher and um, Rob Bear and Jeff Robinson and uh, Jonathan and some other people. And so there was a you know audience and questions and Blake and Ed from um, Life After the Cover Save were the moderators. Oh yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah, I love so, those guys. So okay. a, lot of, a lot of fun. And um, yeah, it, I mean, you know, the, the Las Vegas Open is really cool because of I mean, you've got other stuff that you can do. Like, you know, um, there's times when maybe there's downtime and then you're gonna go and, and just go to restaurants all over the place. I mean, honestly, I haven't been outside since Thursday. Like, I've been in this structure the entire time. It's, just, <laughs> it's yeah. so easy to do that because oh, yeah. there's so much to do. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of the buildings and hotels and casinos. They're like connected. They're connected. Yeah. Kind of like Gen Con yeah. is and stuff. And so it's very easy, yeah. especially if you're busy and you do a lot of stuff like we do, to sit there and basically stay in the building the entire time. Yeah. So... And I taught a seminar on Friday night and one on Saturday night about um, about YouTube. About you know, one was more about the technical kind of nerd stuff and editing and cameras and audio and all that stuff and lighting. And then the other one was about more um, like branding and marketing and content and that you know the more soft stuff to some degree. It's all important stuff to know. And, Absolutely. You know, yeah. they depend on people like us to learn. And and even though I know a lot about what one should be doing in order to promote and to put together a channel and such. I mean, even I'm still learning and there's always so many new things to learn because technology is constantly yeah. progressing and there's new programs yeah. and stuff. One thing I'm thinking about doing with in regard to the videos was changing what editing program I was using. Like I currently use BSDC. Mm -hmm. I think that's how I say it. I get mm -hmm. those letters confused. But it's like there's a free version and then there's a version you pay $15 a year for. Sure. But sometimes it'll constantly crash mm -hmm. or whatever. And so I was thinking about looking at another program like Nestor from Nessie Knows uh, yeah. has been using Filmora. Oh, okay. And for 60 bucks you can get a lifetime yeah. Sub and yeah. stuff. Have you ever used it? No, I haven't. I've used for years. I've predominantly used. Um, it used to be owned by Sony, and it was a, a editing package called Vegas. Um, strangely enough, but uh, yeah, <laughs> it was a Vegas Movie Studio, which was kind of the like lower end version. And then now uh, I've upgraded to Vegas Pro, so that it's a bit more expensive, but it has more usability. It has more features and things like that that are really kind of helpful and and actually help speed me along on certain editing tasks. Um, Sony doesn't own it anymore. It's a, I think it's a German company called Magix, like M A G I X. I'll have and, to look um, at that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice. I mean, it's a really good piece of software. Like even the 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 um, like the, the the movie studio version, which was the cheaper version. I think it's maybe a hundred bucks, um, and um, it's really very powerful. I can do all my my overlays and multi camera stuff and. You know, tweak all kinds of audio things. It's got a bit of a learning curve, but once you figure it out, it's really quite powerful. So yeah. that's one of the things I like to use. There's a lot of other software out there from a lot of different people, though. Oh, for sure, yeah. yeah. But I hope I'm definitely going to look at that. Well, let's talk about Game Force since sure. that's what we're here. Um, I wanted to do a video with Uncle Adam. Uh, we tried to do it last Adepticon, but him and I were both so busy. Yeah, yeah. It, it was. We were lucky. We saw each other for 10 seconds throughout the entire duration of the con. I wanted to share with you guys what game, game Four is and what it does because I feel that it's great. It's going to be great for the community. Companies can advertise on them mm -hmm. and game stores can put in their events and also you could find out about 
conventions and other events going on in your area or when you travel if you travel a lot for work and you have some time off a day off or whatever then you can sit there and look and be like oh let's see what's going on while I'm here in Vegas or wherever sure. yeah. so yeah come on t tell us all, all, all you can about yeah, it. yeah so um, I work for a small company we make apps and websites and we do it for a lot of different kinds of uh, normal companies insurance companies manufacturers things like that but the five of us who work for the, the company we, we we're all tabletop gamers yeah and so we were like we need there needs to be an app that allows you to be able to find um, events going on near you players who are looking to play specific games near you yep. stores near you or also like you said wherever you go so um, we launched it last year about March so March of 2018 was when we really kind of mainly launched it so we're yeah, not quite to the year mark and um, there's a game events listing that's in there that you can um, find local games that are going on near you and it's stores that predominantly put those in but it's not all stores it's also uh, groups and clubs mm -hmm. we uh, added groups and clubs support last year so that um, you know and that's big definitely over in the UK like there's a lot of groups and clubs as opposed to like another because they don't have as much place you know don't have as, as much room in game stores to play yeah so the groups and clubs for wargaming specifically they um, like rent a spot and stuff like that and then they can get more people added to their to their groups or clubs and all that kind of stuff but it is designed not just for wargaming it's designed for all types of tabletop gaming so it's for board gaming it's for collectible card games it's for role-playing games and also for wargaming and you can like let's say you don't play you know collectible card games there's a little filter at the bottom you can like click on it and say I don't want to see any stuff from collectible card games oh yeah and then that helps to kind of like weed out some of the stuff that you don't want to work on or don't want to look at um, you mentioned conventions uh, support. Mm -hmm. That's actually coming in about two to three weeks from today. Um, and we'll be adding that in. So you'll be able to search for conventions in your local area or, again, if you're traveling somewhere. Our store database, our store finder in the app, um, is more than 6,400 stores worldwide. It's so great. Yeah. So anywhere you travel in the world, you can pull out the phone and just it'll show you where the closest store is at any time. So. How would, uh, for example, sure. uh, if, let's say we have some uh, smaller game store owners mm -hmm. watching this. Yeah. How would they go about? What is what is the process sure. for them to be on the app? So if they're so most likely their store is already in our database, mm -hmm. but if it's not, they can contact us if you go to the website, which is imgamefor.com. So it's i a m g a m e f o r dot com. Mm -hmm. uh, down at the bottom of the site is a little uh, link that says store owners and you can click on that and there's a form and you can contact us and if your for some reason your um, store is not in our database yet we can add it to the database and then you can get verified for free as a store owner um, and if you get verified for free then you can start putting your events in there and they will show up in the game oh, thing. Sweet. and it's yeah so it's totally free to be able to do that as so well. it's totally free yeah, okay yeah. that's excellent to know yeah. now if a company mm -hmm. a miniatures manufacturer Battle foam, I think, is already on your yeah, uh, they're on your they're app there. Right now, yeah. Or if, let's say, a miniature painter wanted mm -hmm. to, to advertise their studio sure. for the area that they're in, mm -hmm. what would be the process for that? So right now, we've got advertising in there for, and we can filter it by again those filters at the bottom. So mm -hmm. like, if you say I don't want to see any wargaming content, in it, well, you won't see the battle foam ad because it's basically just you know for for wargaming. But um, we've also, we're adding more advertising all the time uh, to those sections. We've got uh, a couple different companies that are gonna be starting actually in the next couple of months. Um, but it, right now we don't have the ability to do regional advertising. Okay. But we're going to be doing that soon. That's on our roadmap. So that if you were a store or if you were a, a commission painter who wanted to work locally or whatever, if you were a, a convention and you wanted to go beyond just the normal free convention listing, you'd be able to get through the, the update to the app that's coming in a couple of weeks. If you wanted to advertise to uh, collectible card game players because you're doing some big collectible card game tournament, you will be able to soon be able to advertise in just a certain region. We base that off of, um, well, I was gonna say zip codes, but it's technically not. It's, it's based off of uh, an API through Google that has a big location of places kind of database and stuff. So you could say, I wanna do 50 you know, miles from this city and catch that entire radius and do that kind of thing. So oh, good. that'll be coming soon, but oh, it's, not, it's not quite launched yet. So. Yeah, well, I mean, for example, for me, like yeah. Metalhead Minis would put it, we do, we deal with all over the world. Sure, yeah. So for me, I wouldn't have to do regional, but I know yeah. that there are some uh, studio painters 
or you know commission painters mm -hmm. that only want to concentrate on locally and yeah. they don't really want to deal with overseas they don't want to ship or you know a lot. what yeah. right they don't want to ship a lot that. or it's hard language barriers yeah. or you know yeah. cultural differences whatever the case may be yeah. and so you know I just didn't know if that was a thing but for, for companies like mine it wouldn't really matter, matter so much we because we do deal with all over the world yeah but that'll be the, the regional advertising thing is a has a, been a, a, a request that we've had for a while and it's it's on our roadmap so it's coming soon too um, we've got a lot of different kind of things we're constantly updating it um, you know we've got these other our main job you know our main like businesses that we work with and all that kind of stuff and that's what you know pays the bills and everything like that mm -hmm. but this is I don't want to say it's a side project but it is you know we, we generally have somebody working on it almost all the time um, and then maybe that person then moves to some other paid product or project that we're working for another client but then this person's done and then they move to that so um, it, I'm the designer, the visual designer, and then there's we've got four developers, and so it's constantly updating, and uh, it's 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 been a lot of fun. Right now, we've got more than twenty-seven thousand registered users worldwide. We've got a thousand groups, more than a thousand groups. Um, like I said, the store listing is like I said, sixty-four. That's 64,000, 6,400 stores worldwide. About 2,000 are in America alone, yeah. which we didn't really even know when we first started out. When we first started out building that store database, we had 5,800 and we're like, that's amazing that there's 5,800 stores. And since then, we found tons of them that we've missed. And that's a big benefit to the app is that when you wanted to, let's say you were going to travel someplace and you wanted to find the game stores in that local area, it was, it's always been very tough. Yeah. Because like sometimes you find them on, like you type in game stores into Google and maybe they show you video game stores and there's all kinds of different things. So we spent a really long time building this huge list and then since we've launched, we've still had to add another, what is it, 6,000 to that list because people have contacted us and all that kind of stuff. And some of, some stores closed and we, so we take them out as well. But yeah, the fact that we went from, 50, not 6,000, 600 is what I meant, sorry. But since we went from 5,800 to 6,400 in not quite a year. That's it's, it's 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 amazing to me. I didn't think that there was that many stores in the world. Yeah, yeah. really. Well, the thing is, is that what what I noticed. I worked in the game in the music industry before I worked in the gaming industry, mm -hmm. and when the economy crash happened, people were not so inclined to do things like spend three hundred dollars on a refret for a guitar or a bass and sure, stuff like that. Sure. And people were being more mindful of how much bang they were getting for your buck. Mm -hmm. So, for example, going to the movies typically for two people is typically a $60 trip. Do you agree? Because you pay $30 for the tickets, and you, you buy food or Depends whatever, where or where yeah. you eat, yeah, stuff yeah. like that, unless it's like a dollar theater buy sure, or something, yeah, yeah. you know? So then um, you spend about $60 for two people, yeah? And you're only getting entertainment for anywhere from two to four hours, right? right? Yeah. And then you go and buy a video game. Mm -hmm. The video game will cost you between 40 and $60, and then you get 40 to 50 hours out of, of gameplay out sure. of it, typically, yeah. Yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. So people were more mindful about So because of that, I feel that is when the gaming industry really made a boom. Yeah, no, absolutely, because you, yeah. had, you had people who were, you know, you look at, like, I'm gonna buy, um, you know, like a board game or something like that, you can get a lot of time out of a board game and maybe it's 40 bucks, maybe it's 60, maybe it's 80, depending on how big and how many parts mm -hmm. and all that stuff. But yeah, and there's a lot of replayability in a lot of those types of things. With with wargaming and miniatures like we do, there's, if you enjoy it, which not everybody does, but I'm trying to get more people to enjoy it. Um, <laughs> it's if, a work in progress. Exactly, mm -hmm. but if you do that, there's the time that it takes to actually build and paint and then there's the time that you get to play as well. And if you enjoy both of those parts of it, it's it's, it's really a good like um, return on investment to make it to and, and make to it make is. it weird, but yeah. Yeah, and that's how gaming just made such a and there used to not be that many game stores because that they, you know there were people doing it, but it was kind of yeah. more hidden than anything else. Yeah. And now everybody's totally open about oh, because you remember in the eighties with the whole D and D thing. Oh, oh yeah. Do? Satanic you know? panic and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> and now, like, I just saw a picture on Twitter, and it was uh, Will Wheaton and um, uh, William Shatner. And Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and the entire cast of the Big Bang Theory, and they're all playing D and D in like an upcoming episode. Yeah, and you can see like real D and D books. They didn't like make up a fake thing. They're playing Dungeons and Dragons. It's all fifth edition books and all that stuff. And that's like the most popular show on television or whatever. It's it's amazing. Like right now, role playing games have got this amazing, especially Dungeons and Dragons, got this amazing renaissance. And so, 
like one of the things that we do in the app is we have something that's called looking for players. So instead of finding just specific events that are already happening at game stores, looking yeah. for players is kind of like that three by five card stuck to the cork board at the back of the game shop exactly. that says we're looking for a cleric on Thursday nights, you know, call Bob at this number, except now you can be seeing that throughout your entire area and you don't have to call Bob and then now he's got your phone number and you got his phone number. You can just send a message through the app and you know, you don't have to share emails. You don't have to worry about any kind of spam or anything oh, like that's that. Good. Yeah. It's all the messaging is all done within the app. So we're very, um, we're very uh, cognizant of safety issues and things like sure, that. Sure, of course. Because I mean, we, we, that's, I mean, we, from, the, from the time we started, I've always brought that back and said, but is this going to be safe? Because we've had lots of people, we tell them about the app, and they're like, so what happens if my 13-year-old starts using this app? And then, you know, or whatever. And we, we say, these are the, the, the things we've put into play, you know? And, and so, yeah, we, we don't want um, people to feel unsafe, obviously. We want things to be very inclusive, and we built the app always with those things definitely in mind. No, that's good. That's excellent. That's actually a very, that's a very good thing. It's important. You just never know. Sure. Absolutely. People these days, criminals, people that go after, unfortunately, you know, go after kids or go after young ladies or yeah. other, just anybody in general. It doesn't have to be a lady or a man. It doesn't matter. Even just a predator in general. Mm -hmm. You just never know. And some of them are really smart and they go on like certain apps where they know they can find their demographic right. or whatever, their cup of tea, yeah. so to speak. And you just you just have to be mindful of those things. Now, when, if companies and uh, if companies want to advertise and pay for advertisement, is all the information for them uh, of the cost, the rates, mm -hmm. is that on the site as well? Yeah, down at the bottom uh, where it, there's a little thing for store owners. There's also another little button that says advertisers, and we've got uh, our rate card in there. And all that oh, good, it's good, a PDF good. They can download. Yeah, because I remember that at Gen Con you gave out the, the flyers, and I yeah. posted that up on my Facebook and stuff like that. But I just wanted to make sure yeah. that they had online access to that too. So the site is I am Game Four dot mm -hmm. com spelled. I A M G A M E F O R dot com. Absolutely. All right. So, uh, Uncle Adam, thank you so much. Absolutely. It's thank such you for an honor no, to, well, to no, be it's... around you. You're awesome. <laughs> Just we, we absolutely love you. We're huge fans of well, yours. Thanks. I appreciate it. Um, but yes. Yeah, so be sure if you don't already subscribe to Tabletop Minions. Is that Tabletop, tabletop and Minions? Tabletop Minions is two I'm... separate words. The Tabletop and the Minions. Well, yeah? if you just type in Tabletop Minions into YouTube, you'll find it. It'll be the first thing that pops up. Yeah. That I know because that's yeah. how I found it in the first place. But yeah, and every Friday morning he has videos that comes out and he mm -hmm. talks about all kinds of things gaming related, uh, whether it's how to pick an army for what you for playing kill team a crew for kill team mm -hmm. uh how to do certain things with painting how to make certain decisions about what it is that you want to do in regard to tabletop gaming or board gaming yep. just absolutely anything and he spends about 10 to 20 minutes depending on the subject matter yep. uh discussing in very in very good detail and you always learn and pick up something from him even if you've been like me who has been around doing the hobby for over 20 years but metalhead minis this year has been around for 10 years so yep. so yeah i've been doing it professionally officially for 10 years and even so if Every time I watch the videos, I always pick up something. So definitely be sure to subscribe. And uh, hi from LVO if you're not here. But other than that, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video so everybody knows about this good man over here and about Game 4 because it's good for your community and yeah. your local game store. This is a good way to also support your local game store. This is this is one way is tell your store owner, if they don't already know, that this is available, the website to go to so that they can advertise their events and get more traffic into to their stores because I know that that's a problem for some stores in some areas and in some cases people are not even aware of oh, certain yeah. events and stores that are in their area because like he said it's tough and people when they type in Google and say game store or in an area because I'm on vacation traveling or for business or whatever yeah. and they're seeing everything but then people don't usually don't want to be bothered they're just like well that's not what I want if I wanted GameStop I would just find GameStop, sure, you know? Yeah, yeah. So it can be frustrating. So this is a really good way to get some more traffic in the door for some stores and, and you know, get more people at events or an event yep. that you might have or add people to your D&D group. Maybe you're struggling, you know, getting somebody in your D&D group. Now you have a way to do it. Absolutely. You yeah. know? So, so yeah, so be sure to check that out. Thank you guys so much for watching and have yourselves a great day.